Hello and how are you feeling today? I am Elra Servi from Team NDL and welcome to my new series for the coalition called Let's Build a Deck. I'm kind of want to want to go with this name uh, because I think it's really, really cool and just this is the deck that I just never played before. Kind of a series based around your so-called choose your deck profile video that I did a while back uh, of choosing the deck that you want to see first. And pretty much this is what's going to be, but the way we're going to handle it is pretty interesting. First week is going to be about the deck itself. So we're going to do it multiple weeks, two to three of them, and the first week is the deck itself. Second week will be the gameplay, the combos, the things that I think like could be very, very interesting to see. Combos, replays, whatever I'll feel like it. And then last week, if I'll see fit to do it, is either going to be an upgrade that I fought for the deck, by playing it and maybe like splashing an engine or doing something else which is custom cards to help the deck like pretty much grow now not every deck i'm going to do that uh pretty much but um i will try but without further ado let's jump right into the first deck of this particular new series which is the winner of choose your deck profile which is super quantum so let's get started Alright, so Super Quantum is a very interesting archetype. Super Quantum is based around Super Sentai, which is the Japanese version and the pretty much older version of, and the original version of Power Rangers. Unlike popular belief that Super Quantum are based around Power Rangers, they're supposed to be based around the Japanese version, like I said. And they're very, very interesting and they have the, just like the show, essentially, themselves as the pilots, and then they have Xyz monsters that's supposed to correspond with the pilots, and a big mecha, which is the big Xyz king, Magnus. Now, of course, you have the other one, which is the Link, but the Link is supposed to be kind of more of a utility card. Um, so the archetype is very, very cool, and we're going to jump right through the lowest level monster to the higher one, and then we're going to jump into the engine. So starting things off, let's start off with the lowest level monster that you want to run on three, which is Super Quantal Fairy Alphan. Now Fairy Alphan is a very interesting one. Uh, he giving you the pretty much he's a level one fairy, and he giving you the ability to either a target another Super Quantal uh, Super Quantal monster on the field or Super Quant monster on the field, and then you make all monster you control. Uh, that level, which is pretty nice sometimes for Xyz plays, but not really, really seeing any use. The other effect is the more important one, and if you're seeing Alpha in your hand and maybe additional one card or two, Super Quantum could be very, very powerful. And the effect of Super Quantum Alpha, the other one, is that you contribute it, reveal three pilots to your opponent, then he chooses randomly one, you special summon the one that they chose, and send the two others to the graveyard, which is really, really useful because you can get particular effects. It should be noted that there have to be different names, though, if I didn't say that. But yeah, Alphan is very, very useful and it's probably best boy of the deck. Moving on to the level 3 in the first pilot, we're going to start with Ladies first, with Blue Lair. Blue Lair is your level 3 um, psychic monster, meaning that you can summon it with Emergency Teleport. Um, she pretty much sure wrote out the deck, she had any super quant card from your deck to your hand, but her grave effect is something that kind of infuriate me a little bit. Because her effect in the grave is kind of a post of avarice for shuffling three super quant monsters from your graveyard, but you don't get to draw a card, which I don't understand this one. But still very very useful in a card that you want to run at three nevertheless. Then, we're going to move on to the next one, which is Green Lair, probably considered to be the worst pilot just because of the number of monsters, but this is a card I think if we had a little bit more monster and spell and trap support, it could have been a little bit better. Green Lair is supposed to be your special summoner from the hand. He can special summon another super quant monster, including another copy of himself, but mostly you're going to summon another pilot. His other effect is, if he's sent to the graveyard, you can discard one Super Quant card and draw a card. Which is pretty nice as well, but like I said, the problem is we don't really have a lot of Super Quant cards in the deck, which you will see, and I'm going to talk about, because a lot of the Super Quant cards are just not really that good. Uh, at least in the Spell and Trap department. Then, we're moving on probably for the most known Super Quant monster, which is Red Lair. Red Lair was being used in decks like... Um, 
monarchs and stuff like that for being a free special summon very very easily but for today we're actually seeing the cybers one which i think is called link slayer uh or something like that which is allowing you to special summon as well as the final thrasher and also giving you popping spells and traps which i think that's pretty much was the idea and red, uh, and the red layer is pretty much again a fallen crusher for the archetype if you control no monsters and have two nice very recursion effects the first effect is recursion from the graveyard to your hand of a super quant card and the other effect if you send to the graveyard you can summon another monster like from a different name another monster which is not a red layer from your graveyard but it cannot activate its effect from the super quantum lineup which is I don't know about this one, but it's it's still pretty pretty nice. I do think like the restriction of um, not activating its effect is a little bit stupid, but at least it's a nice recursion and the ability to go into certain XCs a little bit more easily. Next up, we'll move on to the last monster of the archetype and probably considered to be the best monster out of all of them, which is White Lair. Now again. I don't think White Lair is better than Alphen. It's probably the best pilot, but not better than Alphen. Uh, but the problem with White Lair is the same goes with Green. You don't always have enough monsters, because his effect says, the first one, that you can special summon him by uh, pretty much sending a non-light super quant monster from your hand to the graveyard. Or field, of course. Uh, but the problem is, is, like I said, it's not all the time you're going to have a non-light super quant monster, so that's kind of an issue. However, when this card is normal special summon, He's also a Foolish Burial for any Super Quant monster, or should I say Super Quant monster, even including himself. So if you want to leave him the same level, you can still leave him the same level and you will search like for example an Alphen uh, with his effect, which is the third effect, as then when he's sent to the graveyard he's searching your uh, Super Quantum, uh, a Super Quantal Fairy Alphen, which is really good. So he's able to search for you the specific card that you need to tutor out. And also the fact that he's just being able to kind of like even sending himself if you need him for like for the you know the the exceeds play if you have the field spell which we'll get to it and then you're just being able to discard another card summon him and not sending him to the graveyard and have him as an exceeds it's it's really really depend on the situation but yeah that's pretty much what white layer does uh, and he, he is your prisma of the archetype that can even still send himself so that's really, really cool. That pretty much does it for the Super Quantum Monsters. Now we'll move on to the rest of them. So first off, let's start off with the first engine and the most obvious one. Because of the field spell and the fact that I mentioned few multiple and multiple times that you need to discard, I felt like the best engine to play with them is a small danger engine and another one, which we'll get to it. So for the danger engine, you have two copies of Mothman because Mothman is probably the best danger for this archetype. You're able to draw two cards, like you're able to discard him, draw a card and discard another, which is really nice. So it's giving you an advantage and an ability to maybe discard a pilot later on if you need to. Sometimes it's not that useful, but it's still like a nice effect to just sometimes like fix your hand. So that's really cool. Then you're playing one copy of Nessie because Nessie uh, is a one. Same goes for Snakey Boy and Jackalope. And then the last one you're playing for the dangers is one copy of Chupacabra because sometimes you want the monster you're born out of Chupacabra to revive one of your uh, dangers because most of the levels, are, or should I say all of the levels, are useful with your pilots. They're 7, 4, and 3s, which is really, really cool and very, very useful. So yeah, the danger is a very, very useful package, like I mentioned, and they're really, really nice to play with. Uh, they're giving your deck a lot of room to breathe in terms of like drawing, discarding, uh, giving you the ability to just search particular stuff, special summoning, filling your board, filling your hand. They're very useful overall. Then we're going to move to the other engine, which is the Time Thief engine, which we're playing three Winder and one Buzzle Ship, because these guys are really useful. Time Thief Winder is just a free special summon from your hand. If you have like a material and you don't really need the material on that monster, sometimes you are willing to sacrifice the Xyz material even if it's one from your uh, Super Quant monster because you'll be able to summon it and then search Basil Ship, discard a Basil Ship and just revive it from the graveyard again and then get yourself a uh, re Redoer which sometimes is very very useful and very very annoying to your opponents to deal with uh, and especially with another particular card it can get like the effect of, um, of a trap card which I think you already know what I'm talking about but like he can get multiple effects which is really good 
so yeah, Diamond Thief, really, really helpful, really, really useful. And even just having Buzzle Ship as just a one-off, you can even run into multiple if you want to. Uh, and like discard it and then just like detaching and then just free special summons. Sometimes it's really, really helpful uh, in terms of like bringing your only link if you need to and you have additional things, which you'll see what I mean. But mostly you're using those to just kind of summoning Redour or getting few level fours to just kind of play your style. So that's really useful. Next up and lastly for the monsters we have the uh, the Perform Mage package, which is one uh, copy of Damage Aggler, which you can discard uh, to search one of things, or you can discard for defending yourself from damage. Then you have one copy of Trick Clown, because you can discard it in Special Summon, which is really useful. And one copy of Hat Tricker, because most of the time you're going to have two or more monsters. Uh, so that's also very, very useful sometimes uh, to just free Special Summon and just have another, another copy so you'll not like brick with your draws and stuff like that. That pretty much does it for the monsters. We have 28 monsters, it's a very big chunk, but that's how this deck works. Now we'll move on to the spells, we have 8 of them. So first off, let's start off with the field spell, which is effect is not a hard one per turn for any of these. Uh, the effect says that you can discard one card, then target one super quantum monster, you control and summon the monster with the same attribute from your extra deck. So you can summon, for example, for the red pilot, you summon the red mecha, which is really, really useful. And then the other effect is, is that you can pretty much target three super quantum mech beast exceeds monsters in your graveyard with different names or on your field and then special summon the mech quantal uh, super quantal mech beast great magnus try to say these multiple times uh but uh yeah you know what i mean it's like it's helped help you to send itself to the graveyard and summon your big boy which is really useful and blue layer can recycle it and recycle big boy but it's it's it pretty much doesn't matter. Most of the time, you're just using him to summon the uh, the use the card to summon your like little stuff, and then later down in the game, if you feel like it, you summon your big boy. Uh, because not all the time you're going to summon your big boy with all of the materials. The little guys also have very very useful effect, which you're going to see. So yeah, sometimes you don't really need the uh, king. So you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to the extra deck. But this is pretty much the core card and the only good spell or trap for the super quantum. The rest of them are either just weird effects or not that useful for the situation. So uh, yeah, this is the only useful spell that Super Quantum have. And in order to search this very, very useful and important field spell, we're having also one copy of Terraforming. We also have one copy of Foolish Burial to be able to send to the grave any Super Quantum monster you want or uh, even Trick Clown if you need to. It's pretty, pretty useful. One Emergency Teleport because we have... Uh, blue layer and it's a searcher for it so you technically play eight field spell so that's really useful one one for one to get alpha so again technically could be even 11 field spells uh, if you can being able to summon with alpha so that's also really useful and then one copy of reasoning because you have different levels and you can get something very, very useful out of it now we'll move on to the traps which you also have four which is not a lot but again it's pretty much the space that you have First off, you have free copies of Shade Brigadine, which are free additional level 4s, because, um, y yeah, it's it just useful. Uh, you're able to just pretty much make a rank 4 with Redoer and give it its, uh, the effect of the trap, which is really nice. Then you have one copy of Retrograde, uh, because Retrograde is just a counter trap, and sometimes, uh, depending on your hand, you will be able to search with uh, Rewinder, you'll be able to search this instead of the so-called... Uh, Buzzle ship in order to just have a counter trap to maybe set up for next turn or another interruption So that's having one of this is really useful. I get it that like maybe playing more than um, One brigadine could be weird uh, For some people and maybe like not really useful for later, but The problem with shade brigadine uh, is the fact that like if I'm playing like a little phantom knight engine to search Shade brigadine is like sometimes I'm not being able to discard them because I don't see the field spell so I thought like Point three Shade Brigadine is a little bit better, so I'm hoping that makes sense. And that pretty much does it for the traps and does it for the main deck, now we'll move on to the extra deck. So let's start off with the pilots from small to one, or should I say the mecha. So first things first, we have the little one, which is uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Grampals, which is pretty much considered to be very very useful back in the day, uh, and the only one that also have an ultimate rare version. Uh, and it was supposed to be like your MST and replace for Alucard in like 20, 
16, I want to say. I'm not really, really sure, but it was very, very useful for a time and probably the most useful out of all of them. Um, because this one is, an, is, is a not quick play MST if you are pretty much not have red layer, a uh, blue layer on it. But if you have the corresponding pilot on a particular, um, you know, at same attribute monster, you're able to activate this one as a quick effect. So this one, if it's equipped with the blue layer, or should I say having a blue layer as a material, it's pretty much MST. If not, it's just us popping, uh, popping a spell or trap on your turn only. And they also cannot attack all of these small exceeses, not considering the big one, if they don't have a material. So we'll get, we're just going to say that in order to just save time. So, um... Yeah, that's pretty much does it for blue. Green is the same thing, Ouroboros, uh, it's the same thing, but his effect is Book of Moon, and you need a uh, green layer for the quick effect. Uh, then you have uh, Magna Lager, which is pretty much a pop, a pop a monster, and you need red layer for activate his effect. And then uh, Lasterx is actually very, very interesting, because this one is allowing you to... Um, essentially get like kind of a effect valor effect that you target a face up monster on the field and it gets the effect until the end of the turn which is pretty interesting it's kind of an effect valor effect but i'm not really sure and again it can work only if you have white layer now we move on to big boy great king magnus or king great magnus whatever you like to call him uh this guy is have Four effects. The first one is the effect when he's pretty much sent to the graveyard, which then he's able to summon free Quantal Mech Beast, uh, Super Quantal Mech Beast Exceed Monster with a different name from your graveyard. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get materials on them, but whatever. And then the big kicker about him is his additional effects based around the materials you have. So two or more, you have the ability to, um, as a quick effect, to target one card on the field and shuffle it into the deck. Or should I say, uh, it's not targeting. Uh, it's touch a material and shuffle a card on the field. I forgot that it doesn't target. But you shuffle a card on the field, which is really, really useful. Four or more materials, he got the ability to pretty much be unaffected by anything except Super Quant cards. And lastly, six plus is pretty much your opponent cannot add card from the deck to their hand. So, uh, Dragon, Thunder Dragon Colossus, pretty much. So, yeah, that's pretty much him. Then they also have one Link Monster, which we're going to go over it before we'll go over uh, the so-called uh, other monsters. So for the Link Monster, I am pretty bummed that it requires three materials uh, to summon and two or more effect monsters, including a Super Quant Monster, and it has three particular effects. Uh, the first one is that it cannot be destroyed by your opponent card effect if it's Link Summoned. The other effect, which is probably the most important one if you're able to summon it and also have the field spell, is that if you're summoned a Super Quant Exceeds monster from Super Quant Exceeds monsters that you not control, you're able to get a draw when it's summoned to his Link Arrows. So you will be able to pretty much like fill your hand once you do the field spell effect of discarding special summoning. So he's supposed to fill your hand. Again, not that great because he requires three materials, but it's still very, very nice. It's very, very nice that we don't need Master Rule 5 anymore, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good to have this card sometimes in your arsenal. And it does come up a few times here and there, but it's not the most useful as it used to be in Master Rule 4. Uh, actually, in Master Rule 4, the deck was really bad, but whatever. And then lastly, um, the last effect, if an Xyz monster gets destroyed, he's being able to summon a Super Quant monster from your deck. Uh, with the same original attribute of one of those destroyed Xyz monsters. So that's really useful because you'll be able to summon, for example, your green layer, your red layer, whatever you need, and just recover a card, which is very, very useful. That pretty much does it for them. Uh, all of them you want to run at two, except from the king ones, which is the link and the, uh, the big uh, rank 12, because the rank 12 is not really necessary to run multiples because you can shovel it with blue layer and you're probably not going to summon it more than once a game. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much does it for them. Now we'll move on to the rest of the Xyz monsters. And yes, you only run additional Xyz monsters, nothing more. It's mostly rank 4 toolboxing. Uh, with the first one we're going to start is Redoer because Redoer is very, very useful and you have the Time Thief engine. So that's really nice. You either uh, get with his free effect to pretty much banish this card. Uh, if you have a monster attached, uh, if you're going to have a spell, which you could take your opponent's spell from the top of their deck, which happened to me multiple times in the replays, uh, and you get to draw a card, and then the other effect, if like if you have Shade Brigadine attached, 
you get to pretty much target one face up, or should I say place one face up card your opponent control on the top of the deck without targeting, which is really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, Redoer is very, very useful. Then one Tornado Dragon, because sometimes it's useful to have your rank 4 uh, MST. Uh, one Digasto Emerald, because sometimes Digasto Emerald does come up. Not really the most useful thing, but it's, it's sometimes the shuffling effect in draw does come up. One Abyss Dweller, because it's Abyss Dweller. And then one copy of Dugaris, because all of his free effects could be useful if you're able to summon him. Because Dugaris leaving you the ability is to either draw and just set up your graveyard by discarding a card. The other effect of special summoning a monster is also very, very useful for sometimes if you're plays with the field spell. And the last effect of attacking with a monster uh, twice is also very, very, or should I say doubling its attack, is also very, very useful with your big Xyz monster, Great Magnus. So yeah, it's very, very useful to have as well. That pretty much does it for the deck. I'm not going to cover a side deck because this is not supposed to be a competitive deck whatsoever. It's mostly going to be just the fun of me just talking about it. And like I said, next week we're going to cover up the replays. Uh, hope you enjoy this one. Um, so yeah, this is how I'm going to build the deck. Uh, if you have any suggestions of how to make this build better uh, for future maybe uh, you know revisiting of the deck, uh, I will appreciate it, but I hope you enjoyed regardless and you learned one or few things about Super Quants. Uh, and I'm hoping that Konami maybe give them a little bit better support next time and pretty soon, because the decks still require few particular cards. And as you can see, they're just running out of resources very, very fast, and they need like few particular pilots and stuff like that. It'll just kind of help them um, generate more resources. And I do have some ideas for the custom cards, uh, but I'm going to leave them for the video for third week. So see you guys, or all of you, and any of you, next time. We don't play good decks, we play bad decks well. Scrubs by choice in this abyss we dwell.